What's going on guys? This is Ethan, the Games Adjuster, and today we are talking about the 1-4 to four player game, Sierra West. So, Sierra West is a game by uh, Board and & Dice, and this is designer Jonathan Pack Canteen, and the solo mode, David Turksey. And this is a game I was really interested in getting. Um, it came out in 2019, and it has this really unique mechanism of kind of splaying cards over each other. I don't know if splaying is the right word. I think it is. Um, but with this unique also four different game modes in the game to explore. So with all that said, I wanted to give it a try. I've had it now for a few months. I want to give you my final thoughts on it and uh, show you how it plays. So let's go down to the table. I will show you how it plays pretty briefly. I'll also show you how I pack the game away and then I'll give you those final thoughts. So here we go. Okay, to begin the game, players are going to first choose one of the four game modes in the game. Here I've set up the Apple Hill mode, which is the first mode of the beginner mode, you could say. It's what the game kind of walks you through in the initial setup. But there are three other modes here. You've got Boats and Banjos, Gold Rush, and then Outlaws and Outpost. So the components for those games won't be pictured here. I'm just going to show you the Apple Hill mode. Uh, but there are three modes in here they're fairly similar just a few minor tweaks here uh, but some of the staying components will be your player board four of the five animals that you'll be trapping uh, as well as this board here not the apple board and then this main board here uh, the things that will change will be the cards up here they're the same backs but instead of maybe showing the little apples on those five distinct ones there and this one here you might have the canoe icon or the outlaw icon, etc. So uh, you'll set all that up based on the parameters of the player count. So for a two-player game, we're going to set up a pyramid of cards just like this. I've also got the basic resources here, as well as the gold there. And then there's some boot icons or boot tokens that you can save up throughout the game. And there are no limited resources, so if you ever need more, you have one of these crates that's five or ten times resources and then this special little uh, moose meeple. The first player is determined randomly so we'll just take the first player here and you're ready to begin. Uh, game is pretty simple it's just going to take some planning and so that is the first step in the game you've got this little turn structure card here first thing you'll do is plan your turn so a uh, unique mechanism here is going to be that you'll take three cards from your deck of cards that you start the game with and at the bottom of all these cards are the same for everybody except that the very bottom of it is a special card for the scenario. So this is the Apple Hill card. It's got the apple there, but you'll notice this red hat is for all of the red player's cards. Uh, that bottom card will change based on the scenario we're playing, and we'll be adding more cards to it as we go throughout this little mountain here. So to begin the game, though, you'll have the three cards that you start the game with, and you'll choose how you want to line these up. And basically, these will kind of form a nice little picture here where the paths match up and then you can see the little mountain there and you're going to slide these into your board so let's go ahead and do that now i'll just throw something together here real quickly that will go with this guy right in here uh this guy there and then this guy uh like so Oop, a little too far there we go so the one in the middle always goes to the back of the other two, and the other two go in the front. All right. And so once you've, on your turn, set up your cards, you are ready to start taking actions. Throughout other players' turns, it's possible that you have these two workers here that could have been used in some of these cabins, uh, or possibly even trapping and um, going off some of these tracks. So as players advance on these tracks here, you can send either one of these workers into this area and gain one of the resources they advanced with. So, for instance, here I would get one food. Here, if they advance on this track, I would get a wood. Or here, I would get a stone. Alternatively, on these cards, you'll see some of these animal icons. So here we've got the bear and the beaver showing. If I were had one of these available, I could send them over here to trap and pay any one resource that I had. Let's pretend I had one of these stone here. I would pay that, and then I'd get to flip over the appropriate tile. So let's, again, say that someone else maybe had a beaver. I could grab the beaver tile here, flip that over, and that'll remain flipped over for the rest of the game and allow me to take a fur action 
where I would gain one wood. Any of these tiles that's not flipped over at the end of the game is worth negative three points, so you do want to try to flip those over as soon as you can. Um, all right, and so let's assume, though, beginning game, game, though, there's no way for us to have taken any other actions. We'll go ahead and just start taking the actions here. So each of these two workers has their own distinct track that they follow. The more traditional meeple here will go on to the brown track, as indicated there, and the one with the hat will go on to the green track, as indicated here. So let's take a closer look at what these actions are going to be. Okay, so let's say I'm going along this track. If I see a boot symbol, like here, that means I can either advance on the a mountain up here, so I might move my frontiersman from here to the next card adjacent, or I could have gone, or any, of, any of the bottom spaces, I could have gone any starting spot. Once I'm on the mountain, I can only move a card adjacent. So each time you get a boot, you can do that. You could also move your wagon here. Your wagon starts on the far left. This is a multiplier for in-game scoring. And so if you want, if you get a boot symbol and you have the resources, this symbol here means any wild basic resource, so stone, wood, or food, you can spin the boot, spin one resource, and slide this along this track. The further you go along, you'll have more and more requirements, more boots, uh, perhaps more food requirements or specific food requirements like you'll see here the last stage is two boots and then two of each basic resources okay uh, now going back to our picture here if we continue to advance let's just say we move the frontiersman we could get a gold now so we'll just take the gold put that in our supply if we continue moving we've got three more boots so we might go ahead and move our frontiersman further up on the mountain and then we'll continue moving and get another food. And then we'll wait there and we'll just do some more actions with the other worker. Now, it's important to remember that you can do these actions in any order you wish. You can't go back to the left and you have to continue advancing to the right. So I might could have stopped on this boot, not gotten the food yet, started working with this guy, and then went back to the green and back and forth until they both reached the end. Okay, so let's just... Play this out doesn't really matter that I got the food right now and we'll continue moving with this one so now this is the fur action so any of these tiles that I had flipped over I would get their respective resource so the beaver will get you wood the fox will get you a stone the um, sorry the rabbit will give you a food the bear will get you a gold and then this is a specific to the scenario card or tile and this one will get you the, the uh, apples there all right and then this tile will be changing from, from round to round okay or game to game but the other four basic resources and the gold will be in every single game all right so if I had any of those I would collect all of the ones that I flipped over so for now let's just say I didn't have any and then if we run into some of these spaces here there's a couple different things that might come up in this particular spot we've got a bear with a red outline. That means that it is a mandatory path action. So to get past it, I would need to either pay any one basic resource or not go past it in my turn there with this particular worker, or I could take damage. To take damage would be to remove one of the cabins I may have purchased. Right now I don't have any, but throughout the game you'll get an opportunity to get some of these cabins here, and these are also ways to avoid negative points. Or I could move my wagon back. So right now the wagon is at zero. So really, I don't have any cabins. I don't have any wagons to move back. Taking damage isn't going to affect me, but maybe if my wagon was here, I would have to move back, which is not good. So uh, right now I can go ahead and keep on moving forward, taking damage technically, because I don't really have anything to lose. And then I'll continue taking more action. So here I would get two wood and then finally we'll arrive at a build action if i want to skip this action i can i don't have to pay the resource and then go straight to the summit but if i want to take that action i do need to spend two basic resources and the build action is pretty good for a couple of reasons number one is anytime your frontiersmen appear on the mountain we've moved him quite a bit throughout all those boots now, if he were to land 
on one of these open face-up cards. If we took a build action with the shovel, then we could take that card and add it to our deck, either on the top of our deck or the top of our discard pile. And so that's a good way to build your deck up to get more of these scenario-specific cards that are going to interact with the scenario-specific items, like here, the apples. Right, and so um, one, that's one of the things you can do. Each card at the end of the game is going to give you cascading points for one of these cards up here. You'll get one point, but if you had nine, for example, you'd get 35 points. And most points is the winner of the game, so that's very important. So you might want to build for that, but you could also build just for the um, cabins here. So showing you some of the cabins over here now, we've got this row of cabin tiles. And so when you were to build one, you'll see the shovel action icon again. Uh, if you want to take one from a certain stack, the first one here is free, and each of these here would cost one particular resource. So here it's any wild basic resource. Here it's a boot icon. If I ever took one of the ones here, then if it's not one of the far right ones, this one gets removed. We'll slide everything down, and we'll get new tiles out here. And these tiles do a wide variety of things. So, for example, this one says um, if you are building one of these on that space, then you get a gold as long as your certain uh, whoops, sorry, stop focusing. Certain worker is in that cabin. Uh, here, as long as you have the appropriate worker in this cabin, anytime you would get wood, you would gain two wood instead. Here, very similar. Anytime, as long as your worker is in this cabin. So when you get a boot, you get two boots instead. And so if you have these cabins available, going back to your area here, before you start taking some of these actions up top, you could assign them to the cabins. So only the more traditional round worker could go into the green cabin spaces. But as long as he's there and you are moving along this track, if you were to get any boots, you would get twice. As many boots and same thing here with the wood so this might have been a good combo here is I have him in that building there I'm moving along this track okay I've got two wood uh, you know if it was a one wood symbol I would get two instead of two or two instead of one so these are pretty cool only the tan one can go into cabins here if there are no cabins built there neither worker can go there yet the mule is a kind of special third worker that can be attained throughout the game and at the beginning of the game, there's already a building for the mule that can be used. So here you can spend one gold to get any one resource. And they can also be used at the summit. So let's talk through the summit actions here. And this is kind of really what you're working towards through most of the game. So uh, if you've gotten to the end here, so let's kind of put these back where they were. All right. And so uh, let's say... We've gotten to the end here, and we want to go ahead and start taking these actions. If we go to the summit, we can go to any of the three top center actions there, right? So let's say we took this one here. If I spend two wood and one food, I will move up on the appropriate track. So moving back over here, you'll notice that there are these tracks that we're trying to move up on. And as I talked about earlier, the moment or the space that you end up with a wagon you want to multiply against the column here so for example if i got all the way to the right with my wagon that's four times whatever i landed here so in this case i'm moving up on the wood track i would take my red marker and put it on the next level because i've done that i will also gain the reward at the top in the food column you get the mule in the wood column you get a boots token that can be saved for later unlike the normal boot icons which have to be used immediately and here I would get a gold for moving up the stone icon there are ways with these special cars that you can move up these respective apple tracks in this apple hill mode and here on this track you would immediately gain a fur action or here you would gain two gold on the top of the basic tracks here you can only ever have one player in that space so it's a race to get to the top because you'll notice this little lock icon, meaning that only one person can go there. Everybody else will have to stop at four. If ever you would reach the top of these tracks and you cannot go any further, but you increase that 
uh, particular column, you will gain the resource again. So either the mule, the gold, or more boot tokens. All right. And again, as players move up this, if you have a free available worker, you can send them to one of the spots on your board and get the bottom basic resource of that track. That does not apply to the apples. The apples don't have a basic re resource. All right. And then after you've done that, you'll take as many of those summit actions as you would like with the workers that you have available uh, and even possibly the mule. And then you'll finish out your turn by discarding the cards that you had there uh, into your discard pile, drawing a new hand of three, and then preparing for the next turn and kind of watching what the other players are doing between the animals that they have available that you might want to put a trapper in or seeing what resources they're moving up on or what tracks and then moving up on or getting one of those resources from the track they went up on. All right, so that's all kind of the basic game stuff. Let's talk a little bit more about some of these summit actions here. And then we'll talk about the Apple Orchard or Apple Hill specific cards. So this action here you'll see this is a basic action. And what it is is you can spend two gold to move your wagon, not paying the cost. So this can be very powerful as you get further and further along this track. Instead of having to spend two boot icons and one of each resource, if you spend the two gold, which each gold is a point at the end, so you're trading points here, but you can move that along ignoring those costs, which is especially powerful down here at the last level. Uh, some of the other ones here you'll see in the deck are going to be like apple specific. So this one here says, spend any three apples to gain uh, as many gold as you'd like per three apples. Here are some more of the basic ones. Spend these particular resources to move up on the food track. These one of each to move up on any track. Uh, these ones for the wood, stone, food, gold again. So they're pretty uh, similar, but some of the icons on those here will change too. So in the apple game, this one here means that you would gain that many apples on this uh, shared apple board here. So that's kind of unique about this mode is this apple tracker is shared amongst the players. So if this action were to happen, the players would gain two red and two green apples, which can be spent by anyone later. And um, here, this action will give you more apples based on your progress on this main board. So as the players will advance their wagon, there will be more cards here. And the further they are, then the more cards they'll get to count how many apples are showing and move the track. So if I were to do that action now, I would add two more red and two more green to the track. Like so. I'm sorry, one more green. All right, so uh, last thing, let's talk about this mountain area, and that should pretty much wrap it up. So on the mountain, I talked about earlier, if you get to an open card, you can take the shovel action and then put that card either on your deck, top of your deck, or in your discard pile. And here's another example of what these cards might do. Spend a green apple to gain a wood, as many green apples as you would like to, to get as many wood as you like. And here's the special animal specific to the Apple Hill mode. Okay, but when you do that, because you've now revealed a new card, your player goes back to the bottom and then will flip over anything that's now revealed. So there are specific cards here with the Apple icon. These cards are immediately placed at the bottom and will be one of the ways that the game will end is if all six of these cards are placed down here. The game starts with one of them and there's only five more to be placed. All right, and this again is another way that you can increase how many apples will be put on the track when you take that particular action. Um, going back up top here, if you look at the next card, we'll flip that over, and the next player would go, of course, like normal. It's possible you could build multiple cards in the same action if you had a way to run back up the mountain again and do that. Uh, if ever players are on the same card and one of the players builds the card, then the, the other player who is on the card gets sent back to the bottom of the mountain as well, along with the player who actively did it. However, as a consolation, they will get one of the boot icons here to save for later boot tokens. And again, this card would go down to the bottom and we just keep flipping them over. So you can see depending on which cards you build, you can kind of have a cascading effect of revealing new options for yourself and for your opponents. Um, that's pretty much it. The game will continue until uh, the five 
uh, Apple cards are revealed, in which case the game will end. At that point, you will multiply the progress on the wagon. That number times each of your levels on the five different columns in this particular mode because of the Apple Hill. Uh, normal mode, you'll only have the three columns of the basic tracks. You'll get cascading points based on this track here on your player board. So you can see that there, the more cards you have, the more points you'll get. Everything after nine will just be five points apiece. You will maintain points for every cabin and animal that you flipped over. You will lose points for every one that you didn't. You will get one extra point per leftover gold or boot token. Uh, and here's a little in-game scoring map for you. And then you'll also get points. I think that's it. And there might be some other game-specific point things. But that's pretty much it. After that, whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. Okay, I'm going to briefly discuss how I store Sierra West. So here we've got the wagon pieces and the extra crates for the um, extra resources if you happen to run out, maybe in a four-player game. Here I've got all the player cards. So each deck I've got facing each other with the four unique cards on the bottom, the main cards on the top. So here's yellow deck, green deck, uh, blue and red finally at the back. I've also got Hastings cards. There's a solo mode that you can play and I've got all his cards at the very bottom. And these all go together in one of the three designated card wells. In the other two wells, I've got divided the banjo and the mining card. So here the mining card comes with the uh, dynamite and then the lantern and there's some special mine cards that go on the bottom instead of the apple ones. Uh, the special cards for those and then on the back side of those is all the bandit cards here with their special cards sheriff the revolvers and the bullets and everything that goes with that so those two go together those are the, the three and four modules uh, over here we've got the apple orchard and the banjo cards so you can see some of the banjo actions here like spending fish to go up the wood track spending those kinds of fish there's different kinds of fish in the game uh, and their special panning cards here so you can pan and take different actions to get stone and gold and things like that. So those cards go together on the back side of the apple cards all nice and neatly in this final card well here. On the bottom the game does actually come with some promos for Teotihuacan uh, which is a really good game. I like that game a lot also by uh, Board and Dice and then also Dice Settlers. Haven't played Dice Settlers but the promos in here. Very cool. And then I start putting in some of these other pieces. So there are quite a bit of boards here that are pretty slender. So those can go down here on the bottom, including the cabin board, the apple orchard board, the small apple board. And then we'll start going into, and even the first player marker. And then we'll start getting some of the basic stuff. So I've got all the boots, gold, and the mule token together, the cabins all together, the wooden resources together, the player pieces. I've got all the player pieces pretty much back together with all their respective tiles. Uh, and you may not new, use all these, like you won't need the canoe and stuff for certain game modes, but uh, you put all those here on the bottom section, just like that, it's pretty good. Then you've got the game specific mode thing. So one of the, uh, a couple of modes have the dice, which is cool, like in the mining one, when you're blasting out areas, you don't really know what you're gonna find. So you roll the dice and that'll tell you how much gold or stone you might get. Uh, some, a bunch of bandit tokens here, the apple trackers there. Put all those together and slide this into the narrower side here. All the different kinds of fish. There are three different kinds. Fish tokens go together. And then you've got this special little fish board. This main big board. The board itself that the cards stack on. Those are two puzzle pieces that snap together. And a turn structure card and these boards here. Which, by the way, are really nice. I like this dual layered... Uh, Thing that this card slide into that's very cool so these all go together maybe i would have liked like different artwork on them or something we'll get into that later uh, but it is really good neat little picture there that you can see there's no specific color so none of the boards are particularly for one player or another which is fine you can just grab any old board and use that so we throw that on top here and then these i just kind of put as best i can to make a nice flush area so i've actually probably put this one first maybe put this turn structure in here 
try to fit these other smaller pieces in best you can and then the rule book finally goes on top there you go so that is how i store away sierra west i know i didn't do my little uh, storage video on the last couple of videos so i apologize for that i find it helpful and unique you guys let me know in the comments below all right let's jump to my final thoughts okay there you go that's how to play so let's talk about it um, firstly we'll start with the theme and the theme is okay so I like that it's like a Western theme overall and you've got kind of different challenges that you might deal with in a Western environment. You've got the orchards with the apples, the fishing with the canoes, you've got the, the mining and looking for gold and panning for gold even with the river. Uh, and then you've got bandits and things like that. So that's cool. Um, ultimately, you're just kind of moving up different tracks. The wagon itself is a track. The um, mountain could be viewed as like a track that you're moving up to get things and move back down um it's definitely the resource tracks why they're tracks in a western environment i don't really know just for game mechanisms so it's okay theme it's somewhat unique you know i like that you're kind of panning for gold and things like that there are other games like that like gold west and rolled west things of that nature but still i think it does a decent job and i do like that you kind of get different flavors with the four different modules um, as far as the production goes Overall, really good. I really like the board. I was kind of showing them there in the storage section. I like that they're kind of double layered and you can slide the cards in the back. I love the artwork in the game. The way that when you stack all those cards for the initial mountain, they kind of melt together in a way that almost makes like this panoramic view kind of thing. I don't know. It's really cool. Really good on the table. Very good table presence because, you know, someone's walking by, they're going to see that mountain and be like, whoa what's going on there and then it's really neat that it just makes up all those cards um, or made out of all those cards also when you slide the cards together in your board it also lines up you've got the green track the tan track you've got the way that the three summit cards make one final summit there in the middle really cool uh, and then the meeples are cool too you've got little canoe pieces a nice little wagon piece the three meeples are different so the guy that's on the mountain is a little bit different than the two people that you use although one of them is just a pretty basic meeple but that's fine uh and then a the little mule guy and then the wooden resources other than the stone which is just a gray cube the other ones could have been cubes too and they went with something a little more unique as far as the uh wood actual being a little wooden wood and then the gold and the food being a little like chicken leg shaped food pieces so overall really good production um everything fits in the box pretty nicely i would have maybe liked um i don't know it just seems like maybe there's some wasted space with the wooden or the card wells maybe they could have like lowered that a little bit so that the actual uh puzzle piece boards didn't kind of have to sit funkily on the top there and then i oh, know that's not a word but they do kind of sit a little funky so you got to watch that but uh overall yeah that's a nitpick i think the rules are pretty good uh, I'm sorry, the production. So getting to rules, I think the rules are also pretty good. It's just kind of a lot. So it's a pretty thick rule book for what it amounts to, like I think a pretty easy game. And a large part of that rule book at the end is just kind of a explanation of what all the different symbols are, which is nice because if you ever get confused, they're really not that hard once you play a few rounds. But if you do get you know caught up on what the symbol means, you can refer to the back, especially with there being four different game modes it's going to be important for you to recognize what the unique uh, game mode specific icons are before you get going. Uh, and you should hopefully be reading through that in the back before you start. It really doesn't walk through those at the beginning of the game in the rule book. It's just gonna go through like the Apple Hill one and you kind of have to discover that on your own. Um, but that's not a big deal. It's, it's, there are really not that many changes. So as long as you can just kind of read through those and interpret them the right way, you should be okay. Um, I would have liked maybe maybe like a better walkthrough on some of that. There were some things I wasn't really clear on. Um, so I had to go like BGG for a few little items. I can't remember now, unfortunately, but just a few things. So I think overall, really good rulebook. I love that it explains everything. Um, I think also the back of the rulebook doesn't have anything. Maybe a turn structure would have been cool there. Just some little reminders. I do wish publishers would use the back of the rulebook more. Uh, but beyond that, I think pretty solid. 
Uh, Gameplay-wise, also pretty cool. It's a good little puzzle. So there's not a lot of player interaction. You can maybe snipe out the card that someone was working on on the mountain. Uh, you might be paying attention to what other players are doing when they are placing their summit cards out because you want certain animal symbols to use your trapper on. Uh, or when they're moving up a track, like, ooh, which track did you go up on? Oh, I need a stone. I'm going to go up on that too. Um, not go up the track, but get a stone. So you can pay attention to that. And um, that's basically the only interaction you want to get. Uh, maybe watching when players are going to speed the end of the game up because you might be counting on something that's not going to happen. I think after the game is in trigger it happens, that last sixth card for the special card row on the bottom, then you play out equal turns and then maybe everybody gets one more turn and that's it. So you kind of have to watch for that. But beyond that, it's really just a looking at your hand, doing all the different combinations of ways you could with those three cards, laying them all out and then puzzling out the order of operation. So I'm going to move my green guy, then I'm going to stop and move my brown guy and I'll skip this action, then I'm going to get the resource to take the other action, then I'm going to take that cabin tile, and then I'm going to, uh, you know, take the mule after moving up on this summit track and I'll use the mule immediately to turn the gold into another resource and then I'll go up on this other track. So it can all combo together and that's really cool if you like those puzzly games. I think you're going to enjoy that. Um, maybe the only negative I would say on the gameplay is it gets kind of samey, especially the tracks because there's only three tracks and you kind of know what they are. Like, oh, I want to move the food, it's two food in the wood. Or I want to move the stone, it's two stone in the wood or food, whatever. They're not that different. And those tracks are in every game. So yes, there's some differences as far as instead of the apple tracks and the apple boards, now we've got the, the dice that we're rolling for the mining and the gold, or we've got the little banjo and we've got to move our canoe, you know, with the wagon, etc. So yeah, there's a little bit of variance there, which spices it up. But in the long haul, or, you know, looking down the road, I don't know, you know, more variety thing, but I just don't feel like every game's that different. And what you're doing from the beginning of the game isn't that much different than what you're doing at the end of the game. Because at the beginning of the game, you can move up those tracks pretty easily. And at the end, you can move up a little ease, more easily, but it's really not a big a difference. The only thing you're really going to gain is how many resources you get when you take like the fur action or um you know the mining or the panning or whatever action so keep that in mind uh time wise and variety are probably going to be you saw my last video my big negatives here uh which is variety kind of surprising so first we'll talk time it's a long game i don't think i enjoy playing this at any more than two maybe three but that's probably it um, four players, it just kind of drags. It's a little long, but people are still puzzling out what they want to do. They should hopefully be preparing for what they want to do between other people's turns with those three cards. But even if, if they got that set, you might have took a cabin they were counting on. So they got to rethink what they're going to build, or you might have sent them down on the mountain. So they're not, not, they have to move again before they take that shovel action. They got to rethink that. So because of all that, it can really kind of slow down sometimes, especially with as much worker manipulation that you're doing on your turn because you're moving the green guy then the brown guy then the green guy again then the mule etc etc so it can be um a little slow sometimes and especially if you're quick on your turn and other people's are kind of ap analysis analysis paralysis that can be a little um make the game that much longer and it make it kind of damper the experience um, so I probably wouldn't play it more than three players. I'm okay with that. We'll play, I'll play my, my daughter and my wife. Um, but I think it's better at two players, honestly, just cause it's a little snappier. I haven't tried the solo mode yet, so I don't know how that is. I'm sure it's faster even than the two player, which is great. Um, and I've heard it's a pretty good solo game. I know, um, Nick Murphy from the brothers Murph says it's really good. So maybe I'll try it one day. I don't know, but, um, overall, yeah, I think two players is my personal sweet spot. Uh, and then lastly, variety. Yeah, I kind of mentioned it in the gameplay. Even though there are four game modes and they kind of switch out what um, unique mechanism is part of it as far as the apple track versus the dice rolling versus the canoe moving, etc. It's just um, the rest of the game, if, you don't, if you're not really focusing on that, it's just the same game. You know, you're still moving up the same three tracks. And that's your big strategy is I'm going to move my wagon all the way across. I'm going to move up the three main tracks of the basic resources and just get a bunch of cards. You could pretty much ignore 
the rest of the modules and just do that every game. And that's a player choice, but it's there. And the game modes don't really change the fact that you could just do that and probably do pretty well. Uh, I think the last game I played, we played the mining one. And I did a little bit of that. I got quite a bit of gold, but so did my opponent. So we kind of evened out on the gold, really. That was a net zero points. And I just happened to build a lot more cards than they did. And, you know, even though they made up like on two of the fives and I went up on one of the fives on the tracks and the rest were fours and she was at four too, it kind of all evens out. So um, I just happened to really just the cards was the big swinger on that one. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much more I'm going to come back to this game. I do like the way the cards work. And again, I love the production. I love that it's got the different game modes there. But I just don't feel they're that different that it's, I'm discovering new things. You know, once you've played through the one, each mode once, I'm kind of good, you know. So I think that's a, a little unfortunate. I don't know how that would spice that up. It could be just a me thing, but I want to give you my opinion. So there you go. That's my thoughts on Sierra West. Overall, I think it's cool. I think it's uh, if you're looking for something kind of unique with that card covering you know, in a beautiful game. Again, I love the artwork. I think this is a solid one. For me, it gets a 7 out of 10. Uh, something I pretty much down to play, you know, just going on BGG verbiage here, basically on what seven means. Usually cool to play it. It's good. I just don't know that I'm going to call it one of my favorite games uh, or in the long run, how long I'm going to hold on to it. So there you go. That's my thoughts on Sierra West. If you played Sierra West, let me know what your thoughts were. If you know other games like it, I know Innovation's got the card melding and splaying kind of thing. That's pretty cool. But if there are other cards that do that well, let me know. Um, maybe another game with uh, where the backs of the cards make this nice picture. If you know a game like that, share that as well. Uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one.